Packet people, okay, I'm back with Ben and Hamsek. He's going to show us a bit more about web hacking and actually how to get into it. So, uh, Ben, welcome back to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. All right, great to have you. So, last time we talked about why uh, we should look at web hacking and how it can benefit us as far as not just uh, our interests, but also in our possible career path. Now, breaking into web hacking, one thing that you mentioned to me offline, you talked about some of the vulnerabilities that we need to be aware of. So when you're approaching a web hacking uh, project or job, if you will, what vulnerabilities do you first look for? Would you, what do you say your top three? My personal top three would be uh, cross-site scripting. Uh, there's IDOR, which is Insecure Direct Object Reference. And then last but not least, SSRF, which is server side request forgery. I will explain all those, what they mean. But those are the three. One is the first one, XSS is very common. It's still nowadays, it's, you can still find them. IDOR or the Insecure Direct Object Reference is very easy to look for, but it's also like you have to understand the application, the logic of it, and you know you have to know how to like use the site. And then the last one, SSRF, gives you access to the internal network, which makes it a lot of fun if you head a big company and you get to see all the internal applications. Ooh, that does sound like a lot of fun. Let's talk a bit more about that one. Uh, so how does that actually work? A lot of people that you, you talk to, they have a daytime job, and a lot of them use a VPN, right? You, you connect to your VPN, then you can access that one internal site that holds your customer's data, or you couldn't access regularly without a VPN, right? Me as a hacker, I want to access those apps too, but I don't have your VPN credentials. So the way I would have to look at it is what external site relies on communicating with this internal application and how do I abuse this site's functionality to be able to communicate with that site and back? So the way it looks is, let's say you go on a social media website, brand new, it just launches, and they say, hey, can you upload a photo of yourself for your profile photo? And it has an option that says, you can also download your photo from another website. So you can pretty much link it to an Instagram post that you made, or you can put in your website that has your photo on there. So that is making, when you put in the address, that site is making a request to your server. We're using that server itself. So you're making that request on the server and not on your browser, and you're fetching data from it, right? So what happens if that can actually talk to your internal network? Can I fetch information within the network of all these applications that it talks to? Because, you know, you, when you and I go on a website, we know that that website standalone isn't just by itself. It has a lot of backend right. components to it that yeah. we can just communicate with directly. But can I manipulate this application to make that connection? And if, it, if that's a lot of information, I want to give you an example. That is, that's good. That's good. So a good way of putting it is, you know, if people that are you know, in engineering that work, you have your, uh, your continuous integration pipelines, whatever, right? You can abuse those tools if you have access to them, whether internal, then I could say, hey, I want to connect to this internal endpoint that launches applications and launch my, launch my own application, right? Or for your case, you know, we, a lot of people from your, your, your viewers on a network that, that are in networking is, can I scan the internal host from 10.000 all the way to to the end of it right to what ips are there and what ports are there you can you can you write a script that does that and sees what's open there's always different attack vectors but the biggest one is just sitting on that network once you're in you can do a lot of things right it's just you have a browser within that internal network to be able to query whatever site that requires a vpn or it's gated by some sort of a you know, a firewall or something that's preventing you to directly interact with it. Nice. Now, I'm sure the answer to this question is it it depends, Chris, but I'll still ask it. Um, now, with, with your initial interaction, a lot of times, is that over SSL or TLS encrypted? Is that something that we can actually see from the wire? Uh, I don't know. I think we probably could. I mean, if we're just capturing my connection, I think if it is encrypted, then probably not. But... When you are sitting on the network or with an SSRF, that doesn't really matter. You know, that really, it doesn't really make a difference whether it's encrypted or not, because I just have a browser and it communicates the same way as a browser does. You know, I'm thinking about being on the wire and see what I see, you know, from a, a packet perspective too. So that'd be an interesting thing. Actually, moving forward, maybe uh, you could do some demonstrations with this and we'll capture it and we'll see what we see from Wireshark while you're doing your thing. 
That sounds like a feature. Yeah, the way I would put it, though, is you wouldn't see anything different than what your browser would do on the wire. You would see the same gotcha. request that your browser would make. It's just you abusing a functionality on that website to see information you're not supposed to. Gotcha. Um, and a good example of it that came out recently a couple of years ago was the Capital One incident. Uh, it was an SSR if someone got into it, and later on they um, released articles and people released like courses or not courses, but like resources to mimic that in vulnerability. Cool. So you you mentioned a few things that we'll have to just slowly unpack as we go. But um, okay, SSR FI door. How do I learn more? What are some resources that I can use to actually start to get my hands on this stuff? So if you want to learn web hacking specifically, uh, there is a company. The bug bunny platforms actually that have their own resources. Hacker One, I'm a little bit biased. I worked for Hacker One a while ago, but we uh, created something at Hacker One called Hacker 101, hacker101.com. It's a CTF platform, it's all web based, based on uh, real scenarios. And if you go and solve them, they actually give you an invite to a private program once you get a few points. So it gives you a boost into the, in the into that world. It's just created for you to learn and also get pushed into uh, getting invited to bug bounty programs. There are learning platforms, uh, you're, you know, you can do Vulnhub, you can do, um, Pico has some really good web stuff. There is your um, Try Hack Me and Hack the Box. Those are on the freemium and some free stuff, but you have to pay for the other ones. Pentesterlab.com, they, um, you have to pay for it again, but they have some really, really good stuff. Uh, but honestly, the best way to do is just getting your hands dirty with uh, the VDPs that are out there and just saying, hey, I know the basics of XSS. I'm going to go ahead and look for these on uh, VDPs. And, you know, you can hack on like the government. That's a VDP. You can hack the United States Department of Defense legally through a VDP program. Cool. Well, we'll make sure to include some of those links down in the description below so you can uh, start to get your hands dirty with some web hacking. So, all right. So what are we going to talk about next time? I think you mentioned you're going to show us a bit about some active recon. Yeah, we can do recon. I, recon is something that we can cover in another episode. Maybe we can do a episode next time on like what XSS looks like, what Ardor looks like, and maybe I can do a quick SSRF demo as well. That sounds good, Ben. Hey, uh, if you have any other questions for Ben, please feel free to comment below. And thanks for sticking around in this episode. We'll see you guys again. Mm -hmm.